strappers, moose here again, back at my feet, back downstairs on the workbench. Um, so this video is going to be about motherboards. We're going to go over uh, a few different types of motherboards. Um, we're going to talk about a motherboard myth that is a pretty ugly myth. And we're going to go over some of the components on them, what's in them, what to look for, etc. So sorry for the camera angle being way up there. I lost one of my other tripods that was lower. So, all right, so let's start off. You have the two inch socket motherboard, right? This is the one that has you know, the large chips. Um, they're usually plastic with a little lever here to release them. These are the older ones, and these are the ones that are usually worth some of the most money, right? So, large socket, two inches, all right? Next, we have small socket motherboard. Now this one, it's you know, pretty much you know, kind of the same thing as the large socket, except smaller. It still has the holes for the pins and a little lever to release it. This is, you know, it's still, you know, a decent motherboard. And next, we have the metal clamp motherboards. Now these are the are the boards that have, these are the newer ones that have the pinless CPUs. So those are the CPUs that are worth the least and you know, that's, you know, this is the type of motherboard that those come on. All right. You also have um, motherboards for slot processors. You have these right here. Um, as far as their value, I mean this one's got a buttload of tantalum capacitors on it, so you know, I'm not really sure what the complete value on this would be, but it's probably pretty good. Then you have um, the double socket boards, the two inch double socket boards are the most valuable boards. There, there are different places that will pay you, you know, different amounts of money for different boards. Some places just say motherboards, whatever, and give you a low price. Uh, but for the higher prices, you're going to get more for this type of board. Um, we also have um, boards that have Apple computers. They're usually blue. And the um, the processors are usually this great big you know, rectangular thing that kind of nestles into that piece right there. Um, they usually have a lot of you know, great big copper fin reed eater type um, heat sinks. <clears throat> and finally, we're going to look at this type of motherboard. Now, there are a couple of videos out there, and a lot of people see these, and their heart starts pounding. They're thinking, oh my god, this is a gold motherboard. No, it's not. There's no such thing as a gold motherboard. Um, I have never ever seen one. And the people on the gold refining forum that I've, that I've talked to have never seen a gold motherboard. What happens is, it, yeah, it looks gold. And if you use a gold test solution, and you can keep putting, you know, the 10 carat solution, 14, 18, 22 carat solution. But you're only putting it on a solder mask, a gold color solder mask. Um, so you, you, the gold's not going to dissolve, so you, or this isn't going to dissolve. So you're going to think that, oh yeah, it's 24 karat gold. Well, it's not. Um, if you scratch it, you, know, you will see that it, it is copper underneath. Now the thing with that is copper underneath here is going to be very shiny. So sometimes, depending on the light, it's really hard to tell the difference between you know, gold plating and copper. After a while you get used to it and you learn to make sure you're looking at it through the right light. Um, but you want to make sure that when you see these, don't send these to a refiner thinking that you're going to get a whole buttload of money because you're not. These are actually a lower grade board. Now all of these boards come in different colors. Um, the green boards are going to be the ones that are worth the most. I mean they come in purple, blue, gold tone. Um, these are pretty much the only colors I've seen. Most of those are like foreign companies and they're just not worth very much. Um, but then again, there are some places who will pay you know, a flat rate for motherboards. Alright, so when you're selling motherboards, especially if you're going to sell to places like BoardSort.com, it's really important that you take the batteries out. 
This one's got the big one there. And like this one over here. You want to make sure you take those out. Um, most of the places that buy them ask you to remove them. So, as far as what's worth money on these things, now, you, you, you want to make sure that you pull off you know, any um, PCI cards that have the gold fingers on them. Uh, the RAM, of course, you want to get that. The CPUs, you want to get those as well. And after that, you're going to have a variety of different things. The aluminum heat sinks. Keep aluminum heat sinks from the motherboard separate from all your other aluminum. Because aluminum heat sinks on these computers are actually one of the highest grades of aluminum that scrapyards will buy. So you want to make sure you keep those separate so you make more money on them. Now, let's start off with this little motherboard here. So, in all of these slots here, you want to make sure that you, you look through the light, you know, kind of at an angle in them. Some of them are gold plated, like in this one, these are all gold plated, the little metal pins in there. Um, and here they're not. It's usually just a very small portion of it that's gold plated. So if you want to go digging for that, by all means. Um, you also have these IDE pins over here and in there. Um, they're usually scattered you know, here and about everywhere. Some more up here. So, um, let's see. Now also on these things, you're going to have these little monolithic ceramic capacitors. Those little boxes right there. Now those things, uh, the last reports that I got was that um, they are 3% palladium. So for every 100 grams of those things you have, um, you'll have 3 grams of palladium, which is a pretty good percentage. And there's also silver in them as well. Now you're also going to look for the north and south bridge chips, which so there's going to be one of them is right here. It's this. One of them is right here. It's this chip right here that you see the little gold tail on. And the other one's going to be right underneath that aluminum heat sink. There you have it. There's the other one. There's a little gold on the corners. Those those IC chips are going to have you know some good gold content. And also the little IC chips that you find everywhere, all over this board, you're going to save those as well for gold recovery or for selling. Now, we also have these little metal caps right here. If you see that, that is a crystal oscillator. Um, there's another one right there. Those have gold content as well. So you want to put those aside, separate them for processing or selling. You want to make sure you look underneath the battery because uh, sometimes there's a gold plate in that. And also make sure that you pull off everything that has copper on it. Alright, now over here where you have the, uh, the monitor input and output, the you know, ports for printers or whatever. All of these little things are going to have little gold-plated pins in them, even the USB ports, and even sometimes these um, these jacks over here for microphones, speakers, whatever. You want to make sure you check those as well, because there could be some gold plate in that. Once in a while on these older motherboards, you might find a little box like this that has um, these little number switches. If you can see that right there, you're going to want to carefully take those apart because sometimes they have little gold balls in them. And according to original feats, they're solid gold. They're, they're, they're very small. Um, I'm not sure if the inside is actually brass, which would make it kind of gold colored, and they're just gold plated. I'm not totally sure of that, but it's you know, still something definitely to worth, worth keeping. Oftentimes, you're going to find these yellow boxes, those are tantalum capacitors. That's been a real hot subject uh, the past week or so on my Facebook page. Uh, people wanting to know, you know, can you tell me more information about tantalum? Unfortunately, I can't. Um, I don't really know a whole heck of a lot about them. I just know that these little yellow boxes are tantalum capacitors. I know there's some... Alright, so the next question I guess is going to be, how do you process all this stuff? Well, um, most of the gold pins, the gold plated stuff, 
you can process with AP. You can use um, hydrochloric acid alone if you, you know, bring it to a simmer. Um, that should eat all the base metal out. The IC chips, you're going to want to um, use a process. It's a multi-step process. Uh, there's a, a YouTuber out there, his name is Geo. He has each step done. Uh, it starts off with incineration, uh, then it goes to separation, uh, and, and right down to gold panning, and then processing. Because when you when you incinerate the chip, you end up with three gold bearing things. You have the gold bonding wires that are you know freed by the incineration process. Process. You have uh, any gold plated pins from the legs or anything like that, and you have the little silicon wafer in there that may have gold on it as well. So that's that process. Uh, tantalum. I have no idea how to recover that. Uh, I just remove the components in bulk and sell them. Uh, tantalum is one of those metals that is quite expensive and it has a lot of very interesting properties like its melting point is like over 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit which is amazing. Um, as far as processing anything else, you, you can pretty much process everything with those three methods. Um, AP, hot HCL, or um, incineration. So, if you have any questions, if there's something I forgot, please let me know. I'm sure I forgot something. I mean, this is such a huge topic to cover. Um, I'm trying to cover the best that I can. And again, sorry, I can't tell you any more about tantalum. Uh, but you know, if there's somebody else out there who's watching this who knows more, if you have any website links that would have some better information, please put it down here in the comment section. And thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. See you.